Hello, good morning, good evening, and welcome to Big World Cinema. Without further ado, we'll continue with what you're here for. And to ensure this channel survives, please don't skip the ads. Thank you. It was January 2020. I was living in the Ari area of Bangkok before heading to the Philippines in March for my first visit. So I was looking for a Filipina to meet when I arrived here. The advice people give is, don't have a girl meet you at the airport, otherwise you're going to rock up at the airport and have some random chick you've been chatting to online turn up with a van full of relatives who want feeding. And she'll never leave your side so that another Filipina doesn't latch on to you. I'd left the UK in December and wasn't really doing much with my days apart from going to the gym, lounging by the pool, walking down to the malls and perusing online dating websites. Checking online profiles is addictive. I'd spend hours plowing through Tinder, Christian Filipina, Filipino Cupid and date in Asia. Interacting with Filipinas was easy. I was chatting with girls from different areas of the Philippines, which was a bit stupid as I had a flight booked already to go to Cebu. But anyway, I'd start a conversation with a girl living in Dumaguete or Mindanao, which would quickly move to WhatsApp and then we'd connect on video which is where I discover they didn't look anything like their one profile photo which had been taken from the other side of the city at midnight. After the video call ended, I blocked them. It's weird how dating has evolved over the years. Back in my day, you'd spend a couple of weeks glancing across the room at Sharon at the school disco mustering up the courage to go and ask her for a slow dance by which time Trevor Dowd the handsome school captain has already muscled himself in there and got to fourth base. Nowadays you can start a conversation with someone on a dating site across the other side of the world and be video chatting with them virtually in their living room or a boarding house. Wow! Isn't the internet amazing, man? Chatting with Filipinas online is frustrating, however. I've started literally hundreds of conversations with Filipinas. Notice I use the expression, I've started. 99% of conversations don't go anywhere, however. Filipinas don't normally make the first move, and if they do, they're generally the ones who are out to scam you. And don't expect the conversations to be very enlightening. So I'm the one asking all the questions, like 10 questions in a row, without them asking anything of me apart from, have you had your dinner yet? Another one is, so where are you from? Which is clearly written in my profile. The majority of Filipinas don't read profiles, however. I have this game I play whereby having been chatting to someone one day, I will wait to see if they message me first the next day. Naturally they don't. Okay, you may say that Filipinas need to be courted, but if they're at all interested in me, surely they'd instigate a conversation and ask me questions. Filipinas aren't the brightest bulbs in the room. Most of the time you need to dumb down. I've rarely met an intelligent woman on a dating site. Okay, I met my wife on Tinder. I met my beautiful girlfriend who's got a degree at Harvard on Pina, love. But I've rarely met an intelligent woman on a dating site. You can't be too cryptic or clever in your messages as a number of Filipinas will describe themselves as simple. When I point out a simple person in the UK is someone who is mentally retarded, 
They get offended. No, sweetheart, I'm not calling you. Too late, block. Responses to my questions are minimal and uninteresting, as if they can't be bothered to reply. If I ask two questions consecutively in the same message, only the last one will be answered. At times I wonder why they're on the dating site, when apart from a couple of sexy photos, their profiles are empty. Some will even type the word nothing in their profile. Like, why are you even here? Isn't the idea to try and stir up some interest in your persona? No, obviously not. So I've asked 10 questions and nothing has asked of me. I move on. I know how to take a hint. Filipinas are not original thinkers. If I've read the expression once, I've read it a hundred times. I'm a gold digger, not a gold digger. The majority will state that they want a serious relationship, as if the word serious has already sucked all the joy from the relationship. The most recent expression I found is, I date to marry, at 20 years of age. Jesus, surely you need to live a little first. I don't think Filipinas actually understand humour, which is funny, uh, as you see Filipinas laughing all the time. But whilst on dating websites, they take everything too seriously and don't see the funny side. They don't get sarcasm or irony. You can't really do slapstick on dating websites, which is all a lot of them understand. So you need to tread carefully. Don't attempt to make a joke that will only be understood by a woman in your own culture, as it won't be here. They will block or ghost you immediately. I should know, it's happened to me on numerous occasions. Someone even took umbrage at being called an old soul. So you need to be patient and wait for them to get to know you first. Having not visited the Philippines and being new to the country, I'd view the dating websites as a way of trying to understand the Filipino culture. And at times, I really connected with some girls and had some great conversations, and eventually met my Filipina girlfriend on one. But that wasn't until I'd been in the country six months. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'd started chatting with Sasha on Date in Asia two weeks before I landed in Cebu. She would be one of the only girls who messaged me first. And she got my sense of humour. She would send a Hey Joker message, which was endearing. A week before I arrived in the Philippines, we simultaneously asked to see more photographs of each other. There's already seven photos of me, I said, but there's only one of you. No, just send me another, my God, ha 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 ha. I sent her some photos that I hadn't uploaded on Date in Asia, plus one in crazy makeup taken with a Japanese girl in Tokyo. Sasha sent three photos, all gorgeous, like the one she had on her profile showing cheekbones a rarity with Filipinas. I asked her if she was getting ready to meet me at the airport the following week. Not that I really wanted her to, but I was just testing the waters. Um, if you're really sure then, she said. Depends if you want to meet me. So what time will you arrive on that day? About 6pm, but I want to go to my condo downtown and get settled in. Then meet you another day, is that okay? She said she'd meet me on a different day, but could she bring a friend so that we could go eat, drink and dance? Already I saw the peso notes tumbling from my wallet. I asked if she went clubbing regularly. Nope, just occasionally, with relatives. Am I a relative now? Okay, you're not. You're being sarcastic now. Just joking, don't be so sensitive. It's amazing how quickly the mood can change with Filipinas. I hadn't met any yet, but already online, you can be having a great conversation. Then bang, 
They call a halt with a lengthy break before the conversation resumes. We didn't chat for the next couple of days. When we did, she said she missed chatting with me. A couple of days after that, Sasha said she needed to charge her phone with her neighbour as it was always dark in my home. Is that because of the electricity or your character? I asked. It's because of electricity disconnected. Have you paid your electricity bill? I asked innocently. <laughs> nah, haven't paid yet. Very dead broke, that's why. Here we go, I thought. She spoke about not working as she had a baby and didn't want to leave her son with anyone as she had trust issues. Sorry, I'm gonna take a shower and watch something on Netflix. Yep, I knew it, she said. What she knew, I didn't know. That as soon as she brought up her lack of funds, I'd do a run in maybe. But the following day, it was forgotten about. Whilst I was in transit in Kuala Lumpur on the way to Cebu, I texted her. Another four hours and I'll be there. Beware. Ha ha ha, excited, she said. So you should be. Actually, when I arrived in Cebu, I wasn't in a great rush to meet Sasha. As she appeared quite keen and I wanted to settle in first so I thought I'd delay her for a bit and we just had intermittent contact over the, my first week. I was staying near IT Park in Cebu City and Sasha lived in Mactan and, and Sasha lived on Mactan Island where the airport is. Sent her my new mobile number and arranged to meet her the following day at Gasano Mall. Although I said I wouldn't leave Cebu City until she confirmed the time which she never did. A couple of days later, I tried again. Sasha said her baby had got sick, so she rushed him to the hospital, but he was okay now. We had a lengthy text exchange, then arranged to meet the following day, at midday, at Pueblo Verde shopping outlet, north of Gasano Mall in Lapu Lapu. I boarded a coach at 10.40 at IT Park but sat for 40 minutes waiting for it to leave. So it didn't leave until 11.20. I texted Sasha saying I was on my way and half an hour later we were nearly at the shopping outlet so I would be there by midday. Sasha texted asking if we were still meeting. My text hadn't gone through Philippine mobile networks are confusing and my Globe SIM hadn't sent the text message as she was on a different network. I panicked thinking I wouldn't be able to contact her and turned to an effeminate Filipino guy across the aisle and asked if he could call her. He said he didn't have any credit on his phone and asked to look at my phone only confirming what I already knew, that the text didn't go through. But then I had the brainwave to message her on the Date in Asia website, duh, and told her I'd be there in 10 minutes. I'm still here at home, I thought you changed your mind. No, why would I? Okay, see you there. I'm there now. Okay, on the way now, riding Hubble Hubble. Why would I not meet her? having arranged to meet her the previous day. So I stood rooted to a spot for an hour by the Hubble Hubble car park inside the outlets complex, not wanting to miss her. Another hour of my life wasted waiting for a girl. But when I saw Sasha waiting to cross the road, any annoyance about her lateness evaporated. She glanced in my direction as I was the only foreigner there. Her images didn't do her justice. She was petite, slender, small framed, but stunningly beautiful. It was like a film scene as Sasha slowly walked up to me and, and immediately reached her arms out to clutch my arms, which was quite a strange embrace, but very endearing. She told me that I was so handsome. I hugged her, she was so cute. I felt instant attraction and care for her. She was wearing blue jeans tight to the skin, a black top just covering her breasts and a gray cardigan. You're so tall, she said, peering up at me. 
As we walked towards the restaurant area, she took hold of my arm, which felt like she was leading her elderly relative. So, so, I, took her, so I took her by the hand instead, which was tiny. She chose a seafood restaurant, not my favorite, as I felt I was about to be fleeced. We sat side by side at a table looking at the menu and ordered tuna belly which we shared together with rice. It wasn't huge but she was tiny anyway. She appeared very shy, talked about her six month old baby and his Taiwanese father who she'd been with for three years before he found out she was pregnant and did a runner. So it's not just Filipinos who are fast runners then. Sasha asked why I hadn't previously married and said maybe we could go to Boracay Island together. With her high cheekbones I could stare at her all day. Her English pronunciation wasn't great but she said that my face was a vision of beauty. Ha! At 58 years of age. After we'd eaten I asked what she wanted to do together that day. She said she wasn't sure, that it was too far to go to the beach. I needed new trainers anyway, so we walked around outlets holding hands, which felt great. She made a comment about needing to buy some milk for the baby. She hadn't mentioned the baby's hospital visit from two days ago. In the Converse store, I tried on a pair of turquoise Chuck Taylor, size 10s, Walked around with them, decided to buy them, took them to the cashier to make the credit card transaction, and then realised I should have tried on a bigger size. This is what being in the presence of a beautiful female does to me. Again, I asked Sasha what she wanted to do. This was my first day in a city I was unfamiliar with, so I needed some guidance that wasn't forthcoming. I said I wanted to spend some time getting to know her. We found a cafe nearby, one of those cute cafes you'd find in Japan which had individual booths with a small table and cushions on the floor, which we climbed up to using a small ladder. The cafe was dominated by teenagers doing their homework, but next door over a small picket fence were a couple of Filipinas, one of whom was breastfeeding a small child, who Sasha was drawn to, no doubt reminding her that her own child was at home being looked after by her mother. We sat together taking selfies with Sasha rearranging my hair. The previous day I'd gone to a barber's in Ayala Mall who I'd asked to shave the back and sides and leave the front alone. Cover up, said the barber. Great, thanks for that vote of confidence. As I sat nervously in the chair the young barber loomed over me. Hairdressers always made me nervous. They may be nodding acknowledgement whilst discussing the outcome but rarely in my case did it ever go as planned. The young guy started closely shaving one of the sides with his clippers. Having been cultivating my hair growth for the previous 18 months and suddenly seeing it being reared and tumbling in clumps to the floor, I aborted. I asked him to just cut it short on one side while showing him images of Phil Oakley from the Human League whose lopsided haircut, long on one side and shaved on the other, I'd had myself in the 80s. Ah, duplicado, he said. When I questioned this, he called it split personality. Ah, that should do it, I thought. After a shave, hair wash, blow dry, head and shoulder massage, the bill came to 300 pesos. Just over six dollars, bargain. Sasha pressed her head close to my silky locks, then moved to sit across the table from me. I took her portrait. She looked slightly self-conscious with her hand shielding her goofy smile, but with piercing slanted eyes. Said she'd told her 
cousin who works at IT Park about me and we could meet tomorrow. We'd also spoken about her coming to use the swimming pool at my condo. But the conversation wasn't exactly flowing. If I didn't ask questions, she would sit in silence, not saying anything, which made me feel like I was interrupting her doing her homework. Around 4.30, Sasha said we could go to a place called 10,000 Roses Cafe by the coast at Cordova. As if it had taken her three hours to think of where to go, we arranged a 120 peso fee with a Hubble Hubble driver. It was rush hour, so the traffic was intense. I should have been photographing the scenery around us of other vehicles and their occupants, which was quite interesting. But having my arm around a beautiful girl on the back seat with the sun descending low ahead of us, I was more interested in taking shots of the two of us entwined with golden sunlight on our faces. 10,000 roses consists of fake plastic flowers that are lit up at night. But the scenery across the bay to Cebu City was beautiful as the sun was going down. As Sasha went to the bathroom in the upmarket cafe, I opened my wallet to discover only a few notes remaining, which can easily happen when you're the only provider in the relationship. I ordered two red horse beers and two cakes and paid by credit card. We sat at a table outside in the open air. Sunset wasn't far away. Sasha took selfies, added a heart to her photos, then kept returning to phone as if in conversation with someone. She told me she was very happy. Took she took photos of my green eyes with the light shining brightly on them. We stood and took more selfies together in a tight, warm embrace, pulling faces and looking like a pair of lovers. But when we sat down again, Sasha withdrew, in thought, distant, my pet hate reminded me of how I felt previously in relationships, even after being with a girlfriend a number of months. It's a good place to think, she said. True, the setting was great. I was glad to be there. Nothing can beat a beer, a spectacular view, being with a beautiful girl at a beautiful setting at sunset as long as you're both feeling the same thing and on the same wavelength. But she had disappeared. I tapped on her forehead, asking what was going on. I couldn't continue being the quiz master. When I meet girls on dates, I contemplate whether we could be together. 
Sasha was 20 years old with a child from another guy's sperm. What was I thinking? Her non-communication would drive me crazy. The last half hour was painful. Communication is crucial for me. I finished off Sasha's beer. Now get me out of here. As we walked out of the complex to negotiate with a cycle rickshaw to ride us to the main road, Sasha held my hand, but barely spoke now. At the junction we shared a hubble hubble with another passenger. S Sasha sat in front of me facing sideways. I rested my hand on her lap but she wasn't responsive. When the seat beside me became available she moved next to me. And with her face showing concern I asked what was wrong. She said there was something on her mind. No shit Sherlock. Arriving at Gasana Mall where I was catching a coach back to IT Park, Sasha said she had no transportation, in other words, no money to get home. I handed her 120 pesos, with her asking for an extra 30 pesos for milk. Had she been thinking all day what was the best way to extract money from me? Obviously sooner than later rather than hiking all the way to 10,000 roses. But she'd been the one who suggested we went there. Hugging me briefly, Sasha disappeared into the shopping mall. Taxi drivers nearby said they could take me back to IT Park quicker and laughed when I showed them my empty wallet saying that I'd been cleaned out. On the coach journey, I went through the photographs I'd taken Sasha was truly beautiful, but I felt flat, not on a high as I should have been. Arriving home, she messaged me on Date in Asia. Are you home now? Did you get home safe? Hey gorgeous girl, just home, just taking shower. Hope you got home safely too. Thanks for a wonderful afternoon. I sent her 12 images in succession of the two of us together. We look great, like lovers. Hi, thank you too. I'm going to sleep now, night night. She didn't mention the images, as if they didn't exist. Here at BWC, Uncle doesn't charge a subscription fee like Auntie does, but buying us a coffee would be much appreciated. Thank you. The following day I sent a message on Dating Asia, inquiring if she was coming over as discussed. There was no response. The day after I sent another message wondering where she'd gone. She sent a text saying she couldn't reply on the website as she was out of credit, which is called load in the Philippines. Followed by, can you give me load please? He he. Half an hour later, she texted again and abrupt, give me load. Smart. Smart being the Philippine network she was on. Whoa, here we go. The petite cutie who I'd spent a lovely afternoon with, enduring her silences, had finally found her voice. It was now glaringly obvious that she just wanted me as a male milk producer for her baby and load supplier for her phone so I didn't bother messaging her again. Just a quick reminder to please click the thumbs up button if you liked the video or thumbs down button if you didn't, obviously. Thank you. Ha, huh. there's a postscript to this story. Two and a half years later, when I started using the Telegram app on my phone, I received a notification that Sasha was now using Telegram. So I messaged her. I'm funny like that. Sort of intrigued about people and how they're getting on. Three weeks after I'd messaged her, she replied. She asked if I was still in Cebu, thinking I was long gone. And I said I was. So she suggested we meet again. 
We arranged to meet at a coffee house in Fuente Circle, Cebu City, where she was staying at the time. Naturally, she was an hour late. It wasn't a very exciting reunion. You know when you should have let things slide. Conversation was difficult. One of the only things I managed to extract from her was that she was looking for work in the Middle East, but would much rather find a sugar daddy without having to meet him. <laughs> when I'd first met her almost three years earlier, I'd noticed she'd had a large mole between her cleavage, which now wasn't visible as it had been replaced or camouflaged by one of those floral tattoos stretching for four inches above the breasts and between the cleavage that have become popular with young females recently. You. I asked her why she'd had it done. Secret, she said. Cover up, I thought. Touché. If you like the video, please could you like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to ding the notification bell to see my videos before your friends. See you on the next video. Take care everyone.